Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Tevi. Today we are looking at a ship that is a bit lower tier, and uh, I think one thing about the lower tier ships is that everybody just sees them as, well, you could say a flyover country, a grindover country. You know, you, you either free XP across these or you never even get to it, because honestly, you know, uh, low tier battles are often or not can often not be all that exciting. You tend to find uh, face a lot of bots there. And uh, on the other hand, the ships are interesting oftentimes and, you know, don't get enough highlights. So that's why we are looking at the Russian, Imperial, Imperial Russian armored cruiser, uh, the Novik. Now, uh, sorry, actually, she, I think she wasn't an armored cruiser. She was a protected cruiser. The difference between an armored cruiser and a protected cruiser was that an armored cruiser would have a belt armor, whereas a protected cruiser would not. A protected cruiser would have a would have a deck plating, uh, and then under, below that deck plating, the citadel was in, encased in uh, the coal storage because these ships were from a time early in the 20th century when they were still coal fired, and uh, not oil fired, and you know coal. Uh, it tends to be hard <laughs> to a degree and uh, actually be quite useful to bunker that around the citadel such that if any shells get through then uh, they still have to punch through uh, a meter or so of coal in order to get anywhere useful so um that's what this that's what these things were she was built in i think she was she was requested or designed just before the end of the 19th century and uh, was built in the very first year in 1900 and uh, by a German shipyard for the Russian Navy. And she was one of the fastest cruisers at the time because she actually managed to do, what is it, 26 knots in game here. Now, uh, Novik was, uh, was part of the Eastern Fleet when the, uh, when the Russians and the Japanese got into a bit of a scuffle and she was part of the group that was trying to break out of Port Arthur, which had been blockaded by the Japanese, and was trying to link up with the rest of the uh, eastern of the eastern fleet in uh, Vladivostok, I think. So she made her way out uh, together and managed to run the blockade together with some other ships. And uh, while they were they were sailing south towards China to find neutral ports to just, you know, station themselves in. Uh, then the captain of the Novik decided to make a run for uh, for the Soviet ports, you know, for the Russian ports in the north. And given that they couldn't really go through, this, uh, through the sea between Japan and uh, Russia and China at the time, because it was just blockaded and too busy, he decided to make a daring dash, given that this was a very fast ship, to make a daring dash uh, around the east coast of Japan. And one thing that really fascinates me about these, these stories is that, I mean, this was at a time when um, people didn't have radar. Help. <laughs> uh, people didn't have planes really either. To This was way before this, uh, the First World War. Planes to, to do any kind of active role for these sort of things either. So all the spotting and all the information transfer was really done by hand and uh, you, you got information from things like merchant ships that were keeping an eye out for uh, spotting certain ships that were known to be in a certain area of sea but given how vast the ocean is and how little technology uh, people had and they still managed to you know eventually figure out and intercept ships uh, that is just baffling to me how how people were pulling were pulling these things off in these days anyway so the Novik made her way, gave the Japanese the slip and made her way around uh, around the east coast of Japan. But um, uh, just when she reached uh, Russian waters, uh, she was being pursued by the Ch Tsushima, a Japanese protected cruiser, which definitely outgunned her with 150 millimeter guns versus the Novik's slightly underpowered 120 millimeter guns because the Novik was a scout cruiser she was built for speed and for, rec for, for reconnaissance not necessarily for uh, for things like battle lines so she did put up a good fight and actually managed to get some so some shots into into uh, Tsushima and get her to stop for emergency repairs but in the end uh, she was 
uh, she was caught and um, damaged so severely that the captain decided to scuttle the ship. And that was the end of that. The Japanese then again raced it and did some things to it, but that was more or less the end of the service. But uh, I, I found like a very fascinating story, much more swashbuckling and adventurous <laughs> from these early days. It can be quite interesting to research what these uh, what these ships are doing. Anyway, so if we look at the Novik in-game, it's a Tier 2 cruiser on the um, Russian-slash-Soviet cruiser line. And, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's it, she's got no health, she's got no armor. <laughs> but she is pretty quick, well, with 26 knots, uh, and it's definitely quite maneuverable for a light scout cruiser. She's sort of like an oversized destroyer-slash-light scout cruiser. And uh, the guns, uh, like I said, 120 millimeters, eight, but you don't get any turrets at this tier. So they're usually casemated around the ship, so you never get all eight of them to fire. The guns aren't great. And unfortunately, un uh, unlike the real Novik, which actually has had a set of torpedoes, even though they were very small, I think like th 35 centimeter, something like that, in, in that ballpark uh, of caliber, but she did have a set of torpedoes. In, in game, she does not get this. I don't think cruisers get torpedoes at tier two. I'm not sure what the Japanese, maybe the Japanese get. You see, I'm not even actually that familiar with tier two myself. So uh, I haven't looked at these in age, ages. The Chikuma. A Chikuma, I think, I don't know if this is the same Chikuma, but I think this is actually, um, this would have been one of the ships that was um, was actually chasing the uh, the Novik. I would have to check if this is the same one or if this uh, this was a different one. No, sorry, it wasn't Chikuma, it was Ch Chitose? I don't know, I'll have to look it up. It might be. Uh, just checking if these things get torpedoes. No, they don't. So yeah, we, we're not getting torpedoes in... Um, we're not getting torpedoes in in these tiers. And uh, I think the, the Svetlana is probably the first one actually getting torpedoes. Um, Svetlana's not a bad ship. Bogatir was not a bad ship either. But uh, yeah, the no Novik is probably something that you just grind across. But now you have no little bit of a story about it. Anyway, um, setup isn't all that interesting because it's not all that much you can do. You can get a bit better main battery reload time or you can get um, a bit better hit points. The uh, You don't have many options in terms of in, in the equipment anyway. So you may as well just choose the ones that suit you most. And uh, setting her up for speed definitely makes sense. Historical camus and such are not a thing either. So let's get let's get just into one quick round because, like I said, uh, tier two is usually extremely bot heavy, and um, uh, it's not that great to uh, to spend an awful lot of time in. But uh, we we get one game. It's a tier three battle, and we're up against three players. There's a Nassau in the enemy team, a Chikuma, and a Wix, a uh, little American destroyer. Other than that, it's uh, it's all bots. So we are playing on icebergs, which is not a map that you see very often <laughs> in higher tiers, because it is a very very small map and it is I think pretty exclusively for for the entry tiers. But uh, we'll definitely find something to shoot at. Now, being very quick is a good thing in um, in the Novik, but it's also the only thing she's got for going for herself. So uh, you can relocate relatively easily by doing uh, doing over 25 knots but as you can see like i said with the uh, with the case mated guns you can usually only get about five guns on target which is not an awful lot okay so there's the wicks and remember these are 120 millimeter guns and uh, are not doing an awful lot of damage but against destroyers they're definitely viable and the the bot destroyer is actually torpedoing which is quite unusual but um, still something that uh, uh, that you see from time to time, but we've we've done a we've done a good chunk of damage against the enemy wicks, but um, uh, there are some destroyers on the other side as well. Now, uh, obviously, in a bot heavy in a bot heavy game like this, you could just argue that you you can you know you can just ignore the bots. You can't because um, bots are shooting as well, and they can set you on fire. And in these tiers, can actually do a decent amount of damage because nobody has really the um, the power advantage as much okay at this range i'm going to switch over to the ap and see if we can quickly dispatch of of these but uh, the south carolina takes out the samson and we'll see if i can get that other samson but um uh okay we got him that leaves us with the st louis and now we need to back to go back to the high explosive because the st louis does the exact same thing uh has the coal store storage uh, centered on the side so these things are actually quite sturdy 
The Valkyrie might be doing some good there. Let's get rid of that bot. But uh, yeah, if you if you don't if you ignore if you just ignore the bots, you can often find yourselves in situations where um, you you just get uh, shot at a lot <laughs> because they they end up then having fire supremacy quite a little bit. But uh, yeah, that Saint Louis needs to go, and uh, especially the Valkyrie is 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 pretty squishy. And yeah, the bot has dodged the torpedoes, but now we've got um, we've got another Chikuma on our side here. And there's also the enemy battleship, the Nassau. It's a tier 3 battleship, so that's a bit of an issue. Uh, not so much because of its firepower. I mean, yes, that is an issue. But the problem is that it's got it's, that it's full hit points. And it's going to take a while to actually kill that thing. And I'm not sure I have a while. But we do have a South Carolina still. So, uh, so that's a thing. But the South Carolina seems to be more interested in the bots at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we are two kills down. So um, not getting the bots out of the way quick enough. It, it can can spiral a little bit out of control. So I'm drawing fire from that chest over there, but I have set him on fire. So a couple more sh salvos should do this thing away. Um, it's just about getting these things killed as quickly as possible. There's the enemy Chikuma. As we've just de determined, that thing does not have torpedoes. Uh, Valkyrie takes out the bot St. Louis, which is good. Probably, a f was it a flood? Not sure. But uh, now we've got this... Um, We've got this Chikuma right next to us here, and uh, here's a bit of revenge for the uh, for the Russo-Japanese War. <laughs> Come here, you. At this range, uh, I'm a piercing, and that thing's dead. Okay, that leaves the enemy Wix. Now I could have gone for the for the cap, but we um, uh, we've still got two minutes. The problem is there's still an enemy destroyer out here, so uh, we do need to get that thing out of the way first. Uh, just to make sure, uh, and I do need to keep an eye on that battleship. The problem is we are running low on time, but uh, we, we need to kill the Wicks first, and then we'll have to see what we can do next. Uh, the Valkyrie is still firing single torpedoes against an enemy destroyer. This isn't going to do an awful lot, but he's using his guns, which is great. So um, I am dodging any Wicks torpedoes that might be coming in. Yeah, there they are. And uh, uh, the adva the di while the disadvantage with the casemate guns is that you can only ever fire some of them, uh, the advantage is that they are located all around the ship, so you can generally fire them. <laughs> you, you generally get some others to fire if you're turning the ship around, is what I'm saying. Okay, we've got a minute 50. That's not enough time to get to the enemy cup and capture. And Wix is dropping torpedoes left, right and center, because torpedoes are reloading very quickly in these lower tiers. And I am just trying to get that thing killed if I can. But even though this is a very fast cruiser, the destroyer is obviously quicker. But the Valkyrie takes him out. Nicely done. And now we have a problem uh, in Stat Nassau. And he looks like he's been firing high explosive this whole time. Uh, so we've got a minute 20. So the Valkyrie needs to get her torpedoes on target and not die in the process. Because uh, we are ahead of we are ahead on points. So uh, all we need to do is not die. But unfortunately, the Valkyrie is... Um, Determined <laughs> to take out that Nassau, which is very unfortunate because uh, he's missed his torpedoes <laughs> because the Nassau is, is clearly aware of the uh, WASD hacks. And I am just blasting away at that thing from range, trying to set it fire, but I've got only these 120 mm, mm um, PU guns. And there comes the Valkyrie in for a close range engagement. But the problem is, uh, even if the Valkyrie's got her torpedoes reloaded, that's not going to be enough to kill the Nassau. And he's now sitting right next to the Nassau, so he is going to get these torpedoes on target. But if the Nassau is, is paying attention, and I think he is, uh, that next salvo is going to kill the Valkyrie. And then we have a problem. <laughs> because, yeah, there goes the shot, and the Valkyrie is dead. Which means we are now 10 points behind. And I only have 20 seconds to kill the Nassau, and I just don't have the firepower to do it. <laughs> If I had another minute, I might have been able to pull this off, but um, as it stands, uh, even though we're doing an awful lot of damage, and um, uh, I, I, sh I, would, I would have been able to kite away and dodge, uh, dodge the, the shells and eventually kill the NASA if I just had another minute, but I don't, and we only have two more seconds, and that means the NASA survives, and uh, we lose this game. But I found for a tier 2 game that was actually quite entertaining. <laughs> And it did come down to the wire in the end. So, uh, yeah. Um, e even lower tier, tier games can be fun sometimes. And yeah, like I said, I, I, did find the, uh, I did find the history behind the ship just quite entertaining. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.